So, okay, guys, that is the end of the fight. Quite unfortunate for Gary Russell Jr. to experience an injury like that mid-fight. This always leaves a bitter taste on the palate of pain fans as it begs the question, did we really see the better man raise the belt at the end of the night? In any case, boxing is never straightforward, but for me, this was a peculiar fight. Now, when considering the result and the judge's final decision, I'm okay with the final result. But as a coach, I always like to examine, analyze, and understand the options, choices, and game plans of the boxers. Now, before I get into this, I just want to publicly commend Gary Russell Jr. for his exceptional efforts during the period he was left to fight with one hand. This all started in the fourth round and we can divide the fight into these two segments. So before and after Gary Russell's injury. So guys, before the injury, if we take a look at Gary Russell Jr., he used his speed early on, but only for direct attacks and not really for counter attacks. There was no real employment of deception, rhythm change, or even a feeling that, you know, Russell was trying to understand the nuanced behavior of Magsayo to time him. Contrasting this game plan or pattern of behavior, we could actually see that after Russell's injury, he actually boxed better. Now, I'm not saying that he won more of the rounds or even that he was winning during this period, but what I am saying is that he did better in the fight with the limited tools he had after the injury, i.e. his left hand, as compared to when he had both hands before the injury. So he used better body movement to conceal his attacks on Magsayor. He timed some of his attacks off Magsayor's own punches. He slipped a lot of Magsayor's attacks. And another thing that he did was to use his movement to walk Magsayor around the ring, which meant he could fragment the episodes of pressure Magsayor was trying to inflict on him. I think this view is the opposite when we look at Magsayor's pattern of behavior. I preferred him before the injury because he held his feet better and timed Russell to the point that I believe he nullified the speed of Russell Jr. Remember guys, timing always beats speed. Now after the injury, I believe Mag Sawyer was encouraged by his corner to pressure Russell, but it wasn't really that effective. And in many cases, he walked into Russell's straight left down the pipe. Now, I feel Mag Sawyer could have looked to bait the rear hand of Russell instead of reacting to it when Russell decided to throw it. Now, this could have been achieved by using a jab fast but light for pressure with the sole purpose to entice a counter reaction from Russell by the use of his rear hand and then immediately respond by slipping outside of its trajectory and countering with a cross or rear hand uppercut followed by a closing left hook. Anyway guys, that's all for now. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Please remember to smash the like button if you have enjoyed watching this particular update. Leave a comment in the comment section if you want to add anything about Mark Magsayo or Gary Russell Jr. So until my next one, peace out.